have traveled back in time. Today we're in the 16th century. We're going to meet Lady Kathleen of Greystone and Lady Eleanor of Silver Oak. Mm, and a whole bunch of their friends. Mm -hmm. We're also going to cook up some hedgehog. I just spotted it in the microwave. And, <laughs> which is definitely not from the 16th century, we're also going to learn a Renaissance dance. We're going to experience singing in the round. Everybody Near the round. round. Here's the round part. <laughs> Did you know that the first bluegrass song was in the 16th century? Did you know that? Scott Boyd traveled back in time as well. That's not true, by the way. Uh, <laughs> this morning, he's a knight in shining armor. Scotty? Well, I've been doing my apprenticeship right now. Like uh, the tie! Oh, yeah. You like the legs? Woo! Robin Hood! I don't think so. <laughs> Little John, maybe. <laughs> uh, we are here with members of the Society for Creative Anachronisms, and we have a fair damsel in distress. In distress. In distress. The lovely Lady Chiffon. How are you? Good. Who's this gentleman right behind you here? Um, my dad, Nate Bar. Ah. You look tough. No, not really. I'm just a pussy cat. <laughs> Good. Yeah, look at this guy. He's as wide as he is tall, and he's a pussycat, yeah. Maybe eight. <laughs> Thank you. She knows him. I'm going to learn all about right now dressed as a hill, and we'll explain to you some of the things that go into getting into armor, and as well, the techniques used by the Knights of Old on the tournament field. Nobody's going to get hurt today, right? Nope, nobody's going to get hurt. Just on Well, to become a lady of the society, you have to do a fair amount of work. Uh, I 
an autocratic event, an autocratic event, an entire event. I did all the planning for it, organized the cooks, organized the hall where we were going to have it, did all that sort of stuff. In addition to that, I'm an archery marshal. I uh, supervise archery practices and archery tournaments. So you're really sure. somebody who's in charge, and so that's how you... Yeah. Well, who were you before you were Lady Eleanor? I was just Eleanor of Silver Oak. Oh, Eleanor. okay. And I'm just Brianna and Jack. Okay, wonderful. Well, we're going to catch up this morning. What goes into it? Just real quickly, because we're going to put it together a little later on. Okay, we've got about a pound of ground beef and breadcrumbs, some garlic, mm. an egg, <laughs> um, cinnamon, salt, nutmeg, and some cemented cinnamon. And almonds? Yeah, almonds. Yeah, almonds for the quilt. This Wonderful. Is, this is ground beef, not hedgehog. Like ground beef because it look like hedgehog. Well, I don't think it's legal for you to hedgehog anymore. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not hedgehog season? It was in the 15th century. Right. Hedgehog. They give a hedgehog license this year either. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hedgehog season, Scotty, so uh, you'll have to go hunting for something else this morning, all right? Could you imagine me running around the woods dressed like this? Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine? I think I need a slip. Uh, Marshall, we're going to get the, the, the scrap underway. Okay. And we can tell a little bit while they're fighting as to what I'm wearing here and it's dressed as a hero. Okay. Right? Are you ready, my lords? Aye. Salute the cornet of Rogue Hallam. Salute the one who inspires you this day. Salute your most worthy opponent. Get out of the way. Yeah. I'm dressed as a herald. Yes, uh, the heralds were uh, basically ambassadors or uh, messengers. And they were... What happened there? There you had uh, Lord Robart receiving a head blow from Avogard. And he cannot move until he's... He's dead. Her. Yes, and the whole thing is, for safety reasons, the when they're... People are killed in the field. They're supposed to die defensively, which is covering up so that no one runs over them or trips or they get hurt. Okay, I think what we'll do is we'll start to get me in armor, okay. see what's going on, and I'm going to get these gentlemen. Okay. Well fought, sir knights. Back to you, Kurt, Jill. Scott, don't forget, die defensively. Yes. I'm going to take a can opener in case I have to go to the bathroom before I face one of these guys out there. <laughs> They wear as much gear <laughs> as what I have on now. What do you got on now? Well, basically, I'm in my knight's underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I have my metal leggings on. I have, what is this? You can see this That's part right here. It's a padded undergarment to absorb blows, also to absorb the sweat from the body. On okay. over that, I have. You have a cuirass. This is made out of leather. It could have been made out of uh, chain mail, or it could have been made out of plate steel. The leather's cheaper, doesn't give as much protection, but it's a bit lighter to wear. To wear. I, I'd go with the weight. Let's go with the chain man. <laughs> and my collar? That's a gorget. That's to protect the throat. And that, again, could either be steel or wax leather as this is. And that's to prevent the blow getting in and crushing your uh, Adam there. Yeah. Okay, now these are padding. I do have these on, again, underneath the metal, so we are looking really at the safety features here. Yes. Very much so. And looking at some of these people that were out, some of these knights that were out earlier fighting, I'm going to need all the, the pads I can get. One of the things, again, we will stress about this is the safety. Is yeah, very much. Out. Very much. Uh, while the armor is pretty much what they would have worn back then, uh, we're more concerned, even though we're using wooden rather than uh, steel weapons, there's still a lot of force, as you saw earlier, yeah. they're going full force on it. So we want to make sure that there are no injuries we can be sure that we don't want any injuries. Kurt, I don't think I wore this much gear as a goaltender. I mean, probably wouldn't. No. There's, as a goaltender, you're not having people deliberately hitting you. Well, actually, no. You're actually throwing yourself right in front of them, aren't you? Let's just go down here. Uh-huh. Let me undo these a bit. These Kurt, are Jim. your fan braces. Yes. They're for the forearm protection. They also have the elbow uh, off. For a lot of fun. They sure are looking after me with armor, aren't they, Jill? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Scotty, they're looking after you. What is I hope so. <laughs> I have some, I have some miniature uh, lords and ladies here. Really cute ones. What's your name? Sure. And what's your name? 
Connor Brown, conspicuous Connor, uh, to the folks in the, uh, Connor the conspicuous, I made it a 20th century name, didn't I? It was a rock name there. <laughs> We're going to watch some dancing from the 16th century now. Yes, the, the dance that we're doing is called the Black Egg, and it's a couple's dance done in uh, six figures. Mm -hmm. And there we have six and figures. there we have six couple. And what kind of music uh, will be playing for this? Um, this is the Hammer Dulcimer, is this the Hammer Dulcimer one? Okay, it's a hammer dulcimer, which is like a harp that's on its side that you hit with little hammers. It's really beautiful music. Wonderful. If we can start with the music, the dancers will be fine. Maybe you can describe for me what they're doing. Okay, double left back. And hop, two, three. And hop, two, three. And hop, two, three. And all turn. Let's go. On. And back. And three. And all turn. Side left, and side left. Okay. And Lord one and Lady two change places. <laughs> and this middle set, and all turn. Now would this be a performance dance that they would do at, at a special function? No, actually, in period, everyone knew these dances. From the time they were little children, they would learn them. And uh, still in Scotland today, and in some places in England and Wales, they still do these dances all the time, at parties, weddings. Now this, this may be an obvious statement, but this to me looks like the precursor to square dancing. It exactly is. Yes, it is. So what kind of gatherings then would people do this at? So just uh, like uh, a, a Friday night at home? Or? Yes, yes. It was a kind of an thing. You have to remember there was no <laughs> television. There was no, no microwave, no movies, nothing to do ex to fill up your extra spaces of time except for dancing and singing and entertaining yourself. All right. Wonderful. This is the Society for Creative Anachronism. And what an experience this is. We're so glad you got your here this morning. Well, thank you. Kurt? All right. So uh, that was the precursor to square dancing. And the music was the precursor to bluegrass music. I'm really working on this bluegrass thing. I'm really working on it. Uh, a little later on, we're going to try that dance still, by the way. <laughs> that should be fun. Come on. Oh my goodness, my lord, she called him. 
and he and he killed Avalgard the Wanderer. Does this mean we're gonna have to call him my lord when he gets back here? I hope not. Thanks. Straighten out here. <laughs> we're gonna take a break. Be back with more uh, 16th century fashions. And Scott Boyd is a very fashionable young man this morning, all decked out in armor. We'll uh, check out his act as we see him. Park. Yes. All right. I understand you're going to be Christmas caroling at a, at a local mall. 
Uh, yes, we're going to be caroling at Bears Road and at the South Center, uh, raising money and food donations for the food bank in September. Wonderful. Terrific. So look for the mayor at the mall. Kurt, 16th century meets the mall. Oh, Imagine. perfect. perfect. Well, <laughs> Rihanna is chopping up the garlic. Lady Eleanor is supervising. <laughs> is that what you get to do when you're a lady? That's Super right. nice. <laughs> All right, we're making red chalk. And what do we need? We need, we ran through this a little bit, the pound of hamburger. Yep. No, I was relieved. <laughs> but it wasn't going to be real head tell. Okay. Now we need about a quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs. Add an egg, but my, my hamburger's really moist, so I'm not going to do that. Okay. If you need an egg. If you wanted it really moist. Do that. Yeah, you could add an egg. Okay. And then we need about half a teaspoon of cinnamon. It's not nice. Okay. Not well. Well. And we put uh, one cup of garlic in. And about a half teaspoon of salt. And you know what? This is an interesting thing. We can talk about. Can you hold on for a second? Sure. Um, can you look at this? We, we, uh, did, did they have measuring spoons back then, or did they do this all by This is how it was done. This is how it was done. This, this is, is how some people still do it. So we're going to get the garlic and get the garlic. No. You made the guess. So, all of our recipes actually say take some of this and some of that and some of something else and mix them all together and it makes this. It is really good. Anything for cinnamon in ground beef. Oh, yes, it's wonderful. It's really it's wonderful. wonderful. In the Middle Ages, frequently the meat was um, somewhat rancid, and so they used spices to try to the bad flavor. Things are very good. Have a problem. All those spices were expensive. Things were often quite highly spiced just to hide the fact that there was no refrigeration. Wow. Okay, there we are. So you mix that all together. Yep. And knead it a little bit with your hand. All right. And we're going to make hedgehogs and deep fried doormats. Kurt? <laughs> Hedgehog and deep fried what? Dormice. You want to make a dormice? Kurt? I haven't had any good uh, dormice in quite some time. Kurt? <laughs> You're on your own. I can't help you. <laughs> all right. Uh, a little later on this morning, we're going to talk some fencing. Our, uh, our fencers are getting a little geared up. For uh, this morning's events, still to come this morning, we're going to give away another of our television sets, and we'll get back to Scott Boyd, who's uh, doing some fencing of his own this morning. All right, they gave me a, a very short sword. I'm ready. On guard, you beast. Marvelous one. It wouldn't be too marvelous if you're on the other end of that sword. I guess not. Ow! Oh, Did you get you? <laughs> I, I, got, I, have a sword. I have a sword and I'm, uh, I'm Kurt the Protector. Kurt the Protector. So if anyone comes near you, just let me know. Kurt the Protector. All right, well, we're. Scared <laughs> <laughs> me. Yeah. What's on today? Unless it was the action packed day. I'm not fighting anyone. Why am I saying something like this? Uh, Okay, right here. Wait, we have the Dartmouth players coming in doing an excerpt from uh, Let Us Love It. Community Association is doing a big draw for a huge prize. Time with the male fish and chips with champion spoon player Gary DeVoe. And that's pretty well left, but it's going to be a good show. Ha <laughs> ha! Stand back! There. Alright. I protect. Oh! <laughs> Got you in that thing in the back. Good <laughs> Alright, time to check on uh, Scotty Boyd just before 8 o'clock. Make sure he's okay. Scott? Well, you got me while well, I am. Just okay. <laughs> I think we will get this battle underway. I'm with the longsword. I'm taking on Amherst with the mace. Are you ready, my lord? Aye. Play it off! Look out. I got the way down until I'm packed. Okay. 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 Boy, he fired that one on me really quick. I didn't have a shot at him. Whoa. Are you ready, my lord?
We're going to taste test our hedgehog, <laughs> poor little fella, and learn a 16th century dance a little later. That should be interesting. We also have a through the ages fashion show on the way, and we're going to give a mug away from the 20th century uh, playing Brecky City of Life. Scott Boyd is a wing nut. We'll catch up to him shortly. He's a member of the fighting unit. That's right. The wing nuts. Mm, appropriately, appropriately titled this morning. Yes. We'll check on him shortly. First show his headlines this Monday morning. And the weather forecast. Yeah, sunshine. Oh, oh right. time out. See? Two guys died at once. <laughs> Two guys died at once. They fell down. They've been doing this for the last 15 minutes. Uh, it's a day to die for out there. Seasonable temperatures and sunshine. <laughs> Got Hanging out with Connelly Conspicuous. Yes. Who doesn't want his muscle now? No. 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 Ran all around the studio to get him one. <laughs> <laughs> now he doesn't want it. Now he doesn't want it. Connelly Conspicuous, Connor. Come up here on TV. Yeah. Can you wave? Get a wave? Say hi to Grandma. Say hi to Grandma. Hi, uh, 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 Grandma. Kind of like Scott Boyd's first day on TV. Yep. Okay, Scotty, say hi to Grandma. Hi, hi Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> Scott of the leotard. Scott of the wingnut leotard. <laughs> Wingnuts. And I'm out of breath here. They've been teaching me some of the technique with the broadsword. And we have a bit of a battle royal going on. We're going to show you actual three-on-three -three combat. I'm going to try, I can't even breathe. This stuff is heavy. How much armor am I weighing here? What does it weigh, Sarandra? About 65 pounds. Okay. We'll do it. Once again, I want to express how sweet those weapons are padded. Now, Lord number one and lady number two, Reverend. 
Smart one. And exchange places of calming. Oh, so you calm. somebody over here. You put your hand up like this. I need a couple too back here. Oh. <laughs> They're throwing the balance off. So then lady number one and lord number two rev her on and exchange places of calming. You don't actually touch. Kind of no touching. No touching. So then I oh, send all fours, join hands in a circle. Yes. Circle around. Couple number one, let's go. And pull number two up through the hole in the wall. Oh, where the hole in the wall? And then, oh, great. Now I'm going to put it on the wall. And that's the end of the set. Wow. Okay. But I didn't get to do it because there was no couple two down here. Oh. Well, we're a couple two. We can go help them. What did you guys do down at the end of the line? Oh, quickly. Oh, wait a minute. No. Nope. Well, no, now you're out. Now you're out. Can I come with you guys? And now you're a couple two. Okay, so we, we start with the rim wrong. Yes, and one, two, one, you're a couple number two. I'm a two now. I will call it. Couple number one. Rev wrong. And turn out. Go down. Join hands. Come back up the center. And rev wrong. Couple number two. Rev wrong. Come up the center. Turn out. Back around. Rev wrong. Lord number one and lady three. Rev wrong. And call. Ooh, palming, I like this. <laughs> Sword number two is lady one, Reverend Allison Palm. You're supposed to sort a lot during this, too. Perfect. Join hands. What? Part. Back around. Oh, Parting hands. <laughs> couple number one drop hands and hold you up through the hole in the wall. Scotty, we've been told to and flirt. Reverend Can you believe that? They told us one. to flirt. Reverend Allison. Well, we're Reverend Allison. Let's go see what South Boy is up to. We're flirting, Scotty. You're flirting? Yeah, we've been told to. In a hole in the wall. It's, yeah, we're flirting in a hole in the wall. It's better than flirting with weapons like I've been told. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yes, you're right. This is the symbol of the wing nuts for mercenaries who would fight for whoever had the money to pay. Other weapons used in days of old, if you will, were the pole weapons. Sir Andrew, these pole weapons represent the stats. Yes, they would represent uh, pole axes, uh, halberds, uh, blades, anything that had a long blade on a long handle. All right, maybe we can show these gentlemen Sir Knight's fighting. What I tell you, one of the things you may have heard a little bit about, what I said was the calibration, how I knew I was down. It's all on the honor system, guys. What happens is when I take a blow, I have to know whether it was enough to knock me down. Now, obviously, that smack, you will hear those, those things ring, but I will guarantee you one thing. You, you don't feel it. These guys are changing. He's not getting up. He has to stay down now until he is tapped by the field marshal to allow him. One of the other things that, that's very important that you heard it was when I was hit in that last engagement and I was down, Lord Andrew yelled, hold. What, what has to happen when hold is yelled? The knight automatically drops to his knees and stops because he knows there's danger out there. For me, it was... Getting beaten around. We have a little thing coming up in a little bit. I'm going to learn in just a couple minutes' time about using the long bladed weapon. Then, in about 20 minutes to 9, we're going to have the Battle Royal, where it's a free for all. Six people, and only one will leave the ring. I feel like I'm in the WWF, Kurt. Do you know? Uh, dressed for it. Yeah. Oh, what was that? You're Kurt? dressed for it. I'm dressed for it. You wing nut. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope I can get out of that ring alive. <laughs> St. Mary's. Jocelyn told me that we have about two minutes to do this hit. I'm just worried what I'm going to do after the first minute, 45 seconds, or the last minute, 45 seconds after about. I have the staff. I am taking on the Black Knight, Lord Andrew. I am ready, Lord. Oh, he's going to take my head out. Hi.
Got a can opener here? Uh, I judged whether the blow would have dropped me or not. That blow definitely would have dropped me. Here we go. As you can see, no marks. And I'm still pretty. Back to you. I really like that hair sticking to your head look, with a sweat sliding down your face. <laughs> the wing nut, sir, Lord of the cone heads. Here, I have something for you, Scotty. <laughs> Can opener, buddy. Boy, we'll get that helmet off you sooner or later. Turn it off with a taste test. <laughs> Ladies, fire yeah. away. All righty. Well, since so it's made with stuff and forks aren't really pretty, we'll just be a do we, we get the right, no <laughs> ah, 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 ah. and, and quickly, we were talking earlier about what food is not period. Because I said, oh, meat and potatoes, and you said, no potatoes. Potatoes are not period. Uh, red tomatoes, uh, peppers of any sort, and chocolate. All those things are out of period because they are New World food. Okay. Although the New World was no started in 1492 by Christopher Columbus, they didn't really start importing food and until the mid-17th century. Yeah. And so we don't, do not use any new world foods in our foods usually. No corn. All right, that's delicious. Our drink, our drink is minted water. It's basically pickled mint. It's got a little vinegar in it and a little sugar. And uh, we'd like to raise our glasses to Kurt and Jill for inviting us on BTV. Oh. For Kurt and Jill. Oh. Viva! 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 Oh, excellent.
back we go to, uh, we're calling you Lord Powell. You're, you're of the Wingnut group, are you not, Scotty? I think I am. Now yeah, listen, before uh, before you get to the Battle Royal there, yeah. I've got to say hi to uh, some folks I met over the weekend yeah. in Bass River. Oh. I, was out, I was out to a dance there on the weekend, eh? Hello, Bass River. And uh, yes, in fact, it was me, because there were some doubters. <laughs> no doubt now, though. No, I was, I was dancing up a storm there. A dance of fool. Be tough to dance in that stuff you got on. Hurt about 65 pounds. Swords are padded. I'm all padded. Nobody's been hurt. It's a very safe sport governed with strict rules. And before we get into the melee, I'm fighting this one for the honor of Lady Jocelyn and Lady Jill. I hope. Okay. Lord Andrew. Julianne is wearing, 
That was cute. Julianne is wearing a lace bodice and chemise. It's a popular costume of the French merchant class during the early Renaissance, late 1400s. Her hair is covered with a snood. A what? A snood. It's a knitted net. Oh, okay. A snood. <laughs> Lord Jorg Johansson is dressed for walking out in his handsome doublet and breeches, covered by a cloak. The shirt he's wearing is heavily embroidered, and the doublet is, ble is beaded, as are his shoes, and his sleeves, which are removable, if you wish to uh, cool off later during the dancing. Oh my goodness, the glove that he's wearing at his waist is the Queen's Order of Courtesy, an order of very high merit. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Lady Ariana is wearing a green, silk, and black velvet. It's a Italian Renaissance. Her hair is covered by a beaded cap. Magnificent. Beautiful. Yes, it's a gorgeous outfit. And it's, the gown is back laced, and it's a very, very tight-fitting bodice and huge skirt. Beautiful for dancing in. Mmm, I bet. And what about the outfit that you've got on? Okay, I have on a copy from the Arnolfini Wedding Portrait. Um, it's painted by Jan van Eyck in the 1400s. It's green velvet, trimmed with fur, and my hair, head is covered by a gimp and veil. Now, if people want to get involved in the Society for Creative Anachronism, eat hedgehogs and uh, dress up, well, who do they call? We call Belinda Ferguson Brown, that's my modern name, at 453-1888. Okay. Or you can mail to 3119 Austin Avenue, Halifax, Nova Scotia. All right, well, we'll get those from you later in case people didn't have time to catch them and uh, hand them out to anybody who wants to join you. Great. Looking for new members? Always looking for new members. It's a great step forward into the past. Please come and join us. Kurt. Thank you. Thanks to send out, first of all, to Ron Cronstein for the tights this morning. Thanks, Ron. Uh, never know when they were going to come in handy. Society of Creative Anachronism, thank you. A uh, great you. morning. Uh, I know. Ladies back in the studio, your resurrection point is the Tim Hortons on Roby Street, okay? Get it right? Thank you, gentlemen. And where's the lady that was over there fighting? I've got to get her. Thank you very much. Damsel Siobhan. And your name? Corrine. Corrine, you had a good time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you won a lot out there. No, That's why they wouldn't let her fight in the melee, because uh, she always beats up the guys. Thank you. Had a great time. Tomorrow, I'm playing basketball with uh, Dalhousie, the ladies' team. So it should be fun. Join us. Guys, back to you. Still won't meet the height requirement, but have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> here no, tomorrow, my hair is right. tomorrow we're going to be here. It's Collector's Day. We're